Yesterday morning, I received word that my good friend, Dr. Peter Carmichael, passed away. I didn't want to get ahead of things and, and say too much before the family or the Civil War Institute or other colleagues could get out ahead of it and say a few things. I felt a little awkward um, in coming out and saying something uh, in a long format until now. Uh, I feel now is the right time for me to to say uh, what I have to say about Pete and uh, the experience we had together, which we've had quite a few um, and more. So I met Pete Carmichael in 2018, and I was just starting this brand as a full time endeavor. I wanted the tattoo historian to be something new, something exciting, especially for young students and undergraduate students at university levels. And Pete contacted me and he had heard about me through the grapevine and said he wanted to meet for coffee, which we, we did. And we immediately hit it off. We realized that we had a lot in common as far as how we wanted education to work and how we wanted knowledge mobilization to work. We wanted accessibility to various forms of history. And it was a uh, immediate friendship. And I was so, um, enlightened by him. I was uh, so overwhelmed with how good of a man he was. And he really wanted to help, you know, and, and I couldn't find my way as far as teaching in a classroom at that time. Um, I was just thinking about doing this full time, uh, this being live streaming or creating videos and working on getting history out to the public. Pete was all on board with that. And uh, he wanted to help me and I wanted to help him because I knew that at the time the CWI didn't have a huge social media presence. And I'm like, if I can help, please let me know. I'm more than happy to do so. And then we started to work together and uh, it was fantastic because that same energy was alive when you were around Pete, that you wanted to do more, you wanted to do better, you wanted to be a better historian, you wanted to be a good friend. Um, none of my text messages between him and myself ever, you know, went without a reply. We always were a text away. Uh, he would absolutely text me on holidays. You know, I have all the Christmas texts that I received from Pete. I have all the feedback that I received from him and those text messages will never be, uh, deleted from my phone. Um, even if I get a new phone, there's going to be some way I can keep them. And uh, I'm going to cherish those uh, because those were uh, personal moments between us where we got to discuss what we were doing and how we were doing it and um, what we felt we could do in the future with it. So knowing that he's gone has really um, lit a fire in me to keep that kind of legacy going. And uh, after all, he and I didn't do that work for nothing. And uh, he didn't teach thousands of students everything that he could for nothing. And uh, he really introduced them to a lot of great concepts and ideas and believed in them sometimes when they didn't believe in themselves. And I would like to help carry that torch along. And uh, he basically wanted me to, and he wanted everyone who was a colleague to do the same. He called upon all of us to go out there and do that for students, do that for our peers in the community and beyond. Um, I was really excited to have him at the Gary Owen Irish pub when he was there for my live event, the Tattoo Historian Presents. It was a fantastic time. He filled the room and there were a lot of students there. And I was like, Pete, we got a lot of people in here. What's going on? And he, I said, did you make this like extra credit for your students? And he goes, no, I made it mandatory. And that was Pete. And, uh, you know, that, that was one of those moments where I just chuckled myself because I knew that's Pete Carmichael. He's going to tell these students to be here and they'll be there. And they were, they came out in force. Uh, they listened to some of the things they had listened to that week in class, but they were there for him because he asked them to be, and, and some of them because they wanted to be, obviously, uh, former students showed up. And that just showed how much they admired him. And uh, yeah, it was a good night.
Of course, it is from an illiterate man. He is dictating this to a comrade in the third North Carolina. This comrade himself is barely literate. This is some tough writing, right? And it's tough to read. You got to be patient with me. But you would think, all the years I've had experience reading undergraduate writing, this should be pretty simple for me, don't you think? Wow. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. Wow. I was cheap. Moving forward, uh, we started working on other things. He asked me to be at the CWI Summer Conference. I had often said, hey, I would love to live stream interview some of the people who are presenters at the conference. Uh, let's get this out to my audience. Let's get this out to other audiences and let's do it live because I love doing things live. Um, you know, let's, let's bring up the people who are the presenters right after they're done speaking and uh, bring them to me, whoever you want, and we'll put them on camera. And, uh, you know, I'll talk to them for 10 minutes about their book or about their research or about what they just presented on. And he thought that was a fantastic idea. And, uh, I was there for, I believe three days doing those interviews. And then I went out in the field with them and did some live streaming of some of the field stuff, the tours that were going on, just little elements. So we could get that out to a broad audience. But Pete really enjoyed that. And, uh, he was excited to bring people upstairs to my little area and introduce me to various historians and uh, get me on the map with them and to be able to kind of do a, a nerdy speed dating with, with history. And uh, he was so excited about it. And uh, after he was done with his presentation, he came to talk with me. And you can see his body language in the video. And I'll show you a snippet of it here. Uh, he's so relaxed around me because one, his day's done. And, uh, and two, this is how he was around me. He would just relax and he was around this, like, like all of his peers that he entrusted. And there were many, he was like this, he would just lounge around with you and chat with you. And, um, I'm like, Pete, we got to get this on film. Let's just hang out and I'm going to interview you now. And, uh, you can tell, and if you watch the video on YouTube, uh, of those series, you'll see him kind of. Uh, slouch even more in the chair, like it's starting to recline. Uh, but he was so relaxed and so uh, welcoming that you had to just hang out with this guy. And, and this clip just says it all. Wall Street Journal lately, uh, came out with a piece, maybe you saw it, it's right, two weeks old now, about the declining interest in Civil War history. But certainly that argument could be made. But if you're going to make that argument, you have to take into consideration the things that you and others do. Uh, the social media aspects, the way that you are giving live uh, presentations, right? Mm -hmm. To audiences through Facebook. He didn't consider any of that. Uh, the, right. the author of that of that Wall Street Journal piece, right. he looked at it in a pretty traditional way. And so he missed out on audiences right, that you've yeah. created, right? Yeah. And all of that well, was not, not accounted for. Others. Yeah. Many others, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not just me. <laughs> not just you. Uh, but I would have liked to have had a phone call to get in on that article. Well, you know, you know I did have a phone call with him, and so did uh, another fellow um, down at the University of Alabama, mm -hmm. uh, Glenn Brasher. Mm -hmm. And Glenn and I said, well, just basically what I just told you. Yeah. He didn't include anything that countered his argument. He sort of just looked the other way. So right. that's unfortunate. That it wasn't as balanced as it certainly should be. And all it does, it fuels that idea that the past doesn't really matter to today's generation, younger generation, which right. is just not true. Finally, the, uh, the pandemic hit. And um, it was 2020. And he contacted me and he said, you know, I want to do something different. And I said, well, I have this idea to promote stuff on social media in different ways. I'm setting up a, a summer conference of my own for a day online because all these students couldn't go out to the conferences because they were canceled. And, and uh, he said, well, why don't we do our own series and just have all these Civil War historians on to discuss stuff? And it'll be kind of like a conference, but it'll be, you know, a couple days a week or it'll be every week. And uh, let's make it work that way. And I said, well, yeah, all you got to do is say the word, my friend, and, and we'll get it set up and we'll do it. And it was through these videos um, where we hosted so many of them and we talked to a lot of great Civil War historians. It was through these videos where many people really found me in the uh, who came from the Civil War field. And I found others and the, the community grew, you know. 
Pete was definitely of the same opinion of me that a rising tide lifts all boats and we all wanted to help each other. There was no competition ever between Pete and myself. And sometimes when you come from a place like Gettysburg, that's tough to find, you know, because everyone's vying for position. And then Pete was never like that. Uh, he, he just wanted to uh, help everyone. And I wanted to give people a voice through platforms like this. And uh, that's why we hit it off. Uh, but you know, those series of videos that we did, we always look forward to them. Uh, when we weren't doing them, we actually missed each other and missed looking at each other through the screens. And uh, he actually brings that up in, in this clip. Welcome to another live stream here in cooperation with the Civil War Institute and my friend, Pete Carmichael. How are you, Pete? I'm doing just fine, John. It's great to see you. It, we've, see you. Uh, Megan, we've gone, John, I've gone three whole days without seeing each other. We were on a streak there, not just in terms of shows, but we were meeting on the battlefield and doing all kinds of things. So, uh, how are you How are you doing? Do you have separation anxiety? A little bit. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the, uh, the Civil War field, the history field in general, uh, has lost a champion. And man, that there's a, there's a huge hole in me where I'm, uh, trying to think what to do next, as far as how I can take that legacy that he has left for all of us and move that forward. Um, there will never be another Pete Carmichael. He's irreplaceable, but it's up to us to take the lessons he taught us and advance them teach new students about the past in various ways, uh, teach critical thinking skills, be personable, be open, stop competing with one another over position. Because as I just said, a rising tide lifts all boats. And Pete and I definitely believe that. Um, what a tremendous individual. And I'm honored to have known him. I'm honored to have worked with him. And I will greatly miss him. So thank you, Pete.